Hey guys, how you all doing? Now for today's video, I want to talk about something that I think could be one of the coolest easter eggs in the recent period of the Jurassic Park franchise, which interestingly enough, does actually come from the Jurassic World Dominion preview that came with seeing Fast and Furious 9 in IMAX theaters, and how while being a reference to a novel, may also be a easter egg that will set up the return of an iconic character. But before we get into the video, I just want to remind you guys that there will be spoilers, and for those who haven't seen the Dominion preview, just warning you, and also a reminder for you to all hit the subscribe button, join the hunt, and leave a like as it helps the channel grow even more, and hopefully we can reach 2,000 subscribers before the release of Jurassic World Evolution 2 in just about a month. But now with all that, let's begin with a recap as the main portion of the preview take us back to 65 million years into the past when dinosaurs ruled the Earth, and it shows us that many dinosaurs are thriving and living their lives with Things such as herds of Nasutoceratops moving across a river, pterosaurs and such as Pteranodon and Quetzalcoatlus soaring through the skies, and other things, with the main piece of this portion being the battle between a Tyrannosaurus Rex and a Giganotosaurus, which we would see the Giga defeat the T-Rex and set up the new rivalry of dinosaurs. And while many people will simply believe that the rivalry was the main reason for this preview, I actually think that there was a deeper meaning of it, as the fact is that this entire scene is actually an easter egg to the original Jurassic Park novel by Michael Crichton himself, and specifically, it connects to the main character of that novel, Alan Grant. And while many people will be wondering how this is possible, seems how they followed the book very closely for the film. There is one detail that is very important for Grant's character that wasn't actually shown in the film, and that was part of his entrance. Because while in the film, we actually get to see Alan Grant and Ellie Sattler digging up a Velociraptor skeleton, we then see them meet up with John Hammond in a trailer, and he asks them to join them on visiting Jurassic Park. However, in the novel, Grant's introduced very differently, as in the no as in we see him digging up a young Velociraptor skeleton by himself on a hill, and during this, he takes a break from it to look across the Badland landscapes. And during this, he there's a scene where he imagines the land changed to back when the dinosaurs were living, and this scene is described as. He sees herds of dinosaurs tending to their nests, pterosaurs commanding the skies, many other dinosaurs interacting with each other, whether it be in fights, and all this happens with his little juvenile raptor caught in the middle of it, trying to survive in the world of the dinosaurs. And this scene is clearly a callback to this moment from the novel, and it's one of the coolest easter eggs to the novels, and since this is going to be the final installment of the Jurassic World trilogy, it's either, it's quite fitting seeing how this may be the last time we ever see Alan Grant in the films, because, well, we started with him, and we're going to be ending with him in this, and why not show the very moment that we got to really understand his character in the novels? Now, of course, there were obviously differences, like certain dinosaurs and certain events, but it's really awesome to see this small, rather small moment from the novel make its way into the, into the film. But who knows, guys, there could be many other scenes that we get to see in the novel itself, and I really hope we get to see other small moments such as this make a big impression on the film. But anyway, guys, what do you think of this little Easter egg? Do you think it's a cool addition to have as it really, as it's really the scene that the world was introduced to Alan Grant himself, no matter how small it is. Also, do let me know in the comments if you were able to spot this easter egg, and if a small moment like this was able to make it into the film. What other novel moments do you think have a great chance of appearing in Dominion? 
And also, so, what do you think of this little Easter egg itself? Whatever your thoughts and opinions happen to be, I'd love to hear them all in the comments down below. And if you've enjoyed this video, guys, I would appreciate the like, and if you haven't already, do hit the subscribe button to join the hunt. Be safe, and until next time, I'll see you later. Bye bye